Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. Today I'm going to show you how to use a resist on any metal surface that will enable you to use either clip art or your original artwork in a saltwater etching process. This material is called PNP Blue and it looks like this. Now, PNP Blue comes in a letter size sheet and it has a matte surface and a glossy surface. You're going to be working on the matte side. Now, what you're going to need for this is a laser printer. You should probably use like an office laser printer or copier that you might have in your home office rather than trying to take this to a commercial copy center because they may be leery of running this through their machine. At least that's been my experience. Now let me show you some of the other tools that you're going to need. You'll need a burnisher and perhaps a spoon. Now you could get away with two spoons and I would recommend that you try to find spoons that have insulated handles like the burnisher does because this process is done with heat and you want to keep your hands from getting burned. You could also wear gloves if you, if you don't find an insulated handle. You'll want a deco color or enamel paint pen. Now this pen is interesting because it's kind of like a rapidograph which is basically it has a needle point and that needle point is depressed onto the surface and then the paint material comes out. And like I said this has an enamel paint inside of it so it's going to withstand the entire etching process. You'll need a pair of scissors to cut out the PMP blue. You'll need clean pieces of copper sheet. You'll need your original artwork or your clip art applied to your PNP blue and you may need a mechanism for cleaning your copper. Now right here I have a material called Penny Bright and you can get this from Schlaefer enameling. Now this is great because it will clean a copper surface as if you're just scouring it with soap and water. It rinses right, right off and you're able to just dry the copper with a paper towel or a rag and you're ready to work. Now there are some other ways of cleaning your copper and by the way you could use this with silver as well but in terms of cleaning and degreasing you could sand the surface and then wipe it off with alcohol. You could pumice it you could also use some type of degreasing spray that would work very well. As long as you get the surface degreased, the PMP Blue will stick. You do not need to apply a tooth. Now, a tooth is basically a ragged or raised rough surface that you would get from sanding or sandblasting, and that's not necessary. Now, another important thing is a heat source. And I'm going to use a waffle iron. So the waffle iron, I've flipped the plates over and I've exposed the grilling side because I want a flat surface to work on. And I'm going to set my waffle iron at 225 degrees. Some people use an iron for this. Other people may use an electric skillet or a hot plate with a flat surface on top of that hot plate or you could even use a dry mount press. Whatever heat surface that you use, just make sure that the PMP blue is burnished onto the surface of your metal. Okay, I'm gonna show you how it's done. First, I've, I'm going to take an image that's been trimmed down so that there's no waste of this material, and I'm going to turn the black surface upside down against my clean copper surface. Now I'm going to place this on top of the heat surface. Now you can see how the plastic is a little bit raised. So what I can do is I can begin to just hold it down. Now I could either use the spoon or the burnisher to begin burnishing that image onto the copper. Now take your time, you want to hit every little square millimeter of the PMP blue surface, you should be able to see how the piece is adhering because it'll have a slight color shift as you start to burnish it down. Okay, I've gone over the entire surface using either my burnisher or my spoon 
and it looks like I may have like one or two spots that I just need to go back over because I don't see that color shift. So I'm just going to rub a little harder. Okay, it looks like I've got this one done. So I'm just going to use the spoon and the burnisher to pick it up and place it on a heat resistant surface. Now you want to let that cool by itself. Don't quench it. Don't try to speed up the cooling process. Okay, now I did a couple earlier. Here's one. And what I want to do is show you how to lift the PMP the right way. What you want to do is grab one corner of it and then just slowly pull it back. And it will start to release the area that's been burnished to the copper. Now you can see that I have areas where the PMP didn't stick. Okay, if you start to peel up and you realize that not everything has attached properly to the metal, you can put it back onto the hot plate and begin to rub it again and reburnish. It probably will work, but if you've already released it and you're not going to have proper registration or alignment of your image, then what you need to do is go to your enamel paint pen. Always give it a good shake to mix it up. And then what you can do is just push down and start to draw in to fill in the areas that didn't attach properly. And it will take you just a little while to get that image absolutely perfect. Okay, I've got one over here that I've been etching for a while. And I'm gonna put on my safety glasses because I don't want any of this material splashing in my eyes. Here, let me disconnect the electrodes. Now, one of the things that I want to tell you is that when you do this process, be sure that you have an area where you can clip to that you don't really care about. Because where you clip, it may not attach, it may not etch completely. So let me just take a rag and wipe this off. Now, of course, you're probably going to rinse this off, but for the sake of doing this on camera, I'm just going to wipe it off with a rag. Now, you can see where I have a complete image. I filled in with my pen, and the etch was really good. I can rub my finger against it, and I can feel the edge of the griffin on the copper surface. Now, to remove this, I could use acetone. I could hit it with the torch and burn off that area, of course under good ventilation, or I could use a paint thinner to remove it. So let me clean this off and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, I've taken the project and cleaned off the surface to reveal the griffin. Now, as you can see, the griffin is going in the opposite direction from the original artwork. If you wanted it to go the other way and match this original artwork, you would have to reverse the image in Photoshop or Illustrator. And if you're using text, of course you would have to reverse the text image in order for it to be legible. Remember, this process only works if you print onto the PMP Blue surface using a laser printer. If you use an inkjet, it won't work. You have to use a laser printer. And when you do this, you want to run the piece one time only. So gain as many images as you possibly can onto the sheet so that you fill it up, maximize your use of the PMP Blue. You should also remember to experiment. Try reversing the image. You may want to make a positive or, or a negative of the image and see which one works better for you. A negative of this might have worked better, say, for the torch-fired enamel process. I hope that you enjoy working with the PMP Blue Paper. Check out our other videos and products on the OnlineJewelryAcademy.com. Thanks for watching.